When we see Islam in the news, it's usually tragic. We see bombings in the name of Allah, shootings in the name of Allah, stabbings in the name of Allah, vehicular attacks in the name of Allah, cartoon riots in the name of Allah, grooming gangs raping little girls in the name of Allah, female genital mutilations in the name of Allah, persecution of religious minorities in the name of Allah, and so on. Just a few minutes ago, I read that, according to a Pentagon report, ISIS is regrouping in Iraq and is expected to regain territory this year. Almost as disheartening as the endless bloodshed produced by Islam is the deranged love affair between, on the one hand, Western politicians and journalists and educators and entertainers, and on the other hand, the twisted teachings of an illiterate 7th century Arabian warlord. But I'm here to tell you that the news about Islam isn't always bad. Every once in a while, there are some silver linings to dark clouds of death and dismemberment. NBC News posted an article titled, Life Under ISIS Led These Muslims to Christianity. Since this is NBC News, the article is obviously going to remind us that it's only the extremist religion hijackers who are responsible for the atrocities carried out in the name of Allah. But let's read this anyway. Four years have passed since the Islamic State Group's fighters were run out of Kobani, a strategic city on the Syrian-Turkish border, but the militant's violent and extreme interpretation of Islam has left some questioning their faith. By the way, what NBC News calls the violent and extreme interpretation of Islam just so happens to be Muhammad's interpretation of Islam. So, this didn't start with ISIS. A new church is attracting converts, it is the first local Christian place of worship for decades. If ISIS represents Islam, I don't want to be a Muslim anymore, Farhad Jassim, 23, who attends the Church of the Brethren, told NBC News. Their God is not my God. Notice, ISIS is simply doing what Muhammad and his companions did. But most Muslims have never read about what Muhammad and his companions did. So when they think about Islam, they just think about what their parents and their imam told them to think about Islam. Suddenly, ISIS comes along, and these moderate Muslims see Muhammad's teachings lived out before them, and they're horrified. This isn't what mommy and daddy taught them. And when they see the true Islam in all its anti-glory, they want to leave it. They can't leave it when ISIS is around, but as soon as ISIS is pushed out of an area, these Muslims become ex-Muslims. Religious conversions are rare and taboo in Syria, with those who abandon Islam often ostracized by their families and communities. Even under the Syrian regime before the revolution, it was strictly forbidden to change religion from Islam to Christianity or the opposite, said Omar, 38 who serves as an administrator at the Protestant Church. He asked for his last name not to be revealed for safety reasons. The church's priest declined to be interviewed. Changing your religion under ISIS wasn't even imaginable. ISIS would kill you immediately, he added. So would Muhammad and his companions, by the way. While residents are still dealing with the emotional scars left by the brutality of ISIS, Omar says many people in Kobani have been open-minded about Christianity. After you've seen Muhammad's commands lived out by a group like ISIS, the marching orders for Christians in the New Testament start looking pretty good by comparison. What are the marching orders for Christians? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. And if he is thirsty, give him a drink. Let all that you do be done in love. Walk in love. Pursue peace with all men. Honor all people. That doesn't sound like ISIS. Most of the brothers here converted or come to church as a result of what ISIS did to them and to their families, he added. No one is forced to convert. 
Our weapon is the prayer, the spreading of spirit of love, brotherhood, and tolerance. Islamic leaders around the world have spoken against the extremists' ideology, accusing the ISIS militants of hijacking their religion. In 2014, more than 100 Muslim scholars wrote an open letter to ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, saying the militant group has misinterpreted Islam into a religion of harshness, brutality, torture, and murder. While they're at it, these Muslim scholars might as well write a letter to Muhammad, and Abu Bakr, and Umar, and Uthman, and Ali, since the first generation of Muslims were every bit as brutal as ISIS. Only 4.6% of Syrians are believed to be Christian, according to a report by the Aid to the Church in Need. The Catholic Charity estimates that 700,000 Christians have fled the country since the civil war erupted in 2011, an exodus that has halved their proportion of the population. Jassim, who works as a mechanic, converted to Christianity late last year. He says he was jailed by ISIS for six months in early 2016 after the militants discovered he didn't know the basics of Islam. He says he was tortured in ISIS captivity and forced to read the Quran. He was tortured and forced to read the Quran. Those don't have to be two separate things, by the way, since reading the Quran is a form of torture. After I witnessed their brutality with my own eyes, I started to be skeptical about my belief, Jossam said, anger rising in his voice. After hearing about the Church of the Brethren, which opened in September and is part of a denomination with its origins in 18th century Germany, Jossam decided to visit and see for himself what it was all about. It didn't take me long to discover that Christianity was the religion I was searching for, he said. But walking away from Islam meant his relationship with his parents and other family members, was over. Think about this. Muslims in Syria know that if they leave Islam, their families are going to turn their backs on them. But they've come to despise Islam so much, after seeing it lived out by ISIS jihadis, that they're willing to give up their families in order to leave their religion. Fighting back tears, Jossam says he hopes that his loved ones will not only one day forgive him, for finding a new faith, but consider converting themselves. Like Jossam, Thiras also turned away from Islam after witnessing ISIS atrocities. He converted to Christianity around six months ago. ISIS members were terrorizing people and then going to the mosque to pray to Allah, said Faras 47, who is a farmer and asked for his last name not to be published for security reasons. After their prayers, they would leave the mosque and terrorize people again. This is something that's been witnessed around the world. Certain Muslims come out of the mosque more violent than when they went into the mosque. This is confusing to some people because they assume that focusing on worshiping God should make you more peaceful. They don't realize that if you go to the mosque and focus on worshiping a god who orders you to violently subjugate the entire world, it's not going to make you more peaceful. It's going to turn you into a killing machine. Faras says that he has not turned against his old faith and that all of his relatives remain conservative Muslims, but the brutality he witnessed in the caliphate was too much to bear. If heaven is made for ISIS and their belief, I would choose hell for myself instead of being again with them in that same place, even if it's paradise, he said. So here's a former Muslim saying not only that he was willing to give up his family in order to leave Islam, but also that he'd rather burn in hell than be in paradise with devout Muslims. This is a massively negative backlash against the commands of Allah and Muhammad, and it's happening in the very heart of the Muslim world. Now, if Muslims are leaving Islam, even in Muslim countries, even when they have to give up their families, even when there could be violent retaliation, what do you think would happen if Muslims were free to leave Islam without any fear of repercussions? ISIS will eventually be defeated, but not before it sears a perfect image of Muhammad's teachings into the minds of generations of Muslims. And I, for one, can't wait to hear from all the future apostates 
who will not only leave Islam, but also dedicate their lives to refuting it. In the comments section, I'd like everyone to give me your prediction. Will Islam be consumed from the inside until it ultimately falls? Or will the high birth rates keep Islam expanding until it becomes the world's dominant religion?